Good evening. Welcome to Revival at 7. Sorry, at 8. I forgot it's now Revival at 8. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And um, we are very, very excited that we are here tonight to receive the Word of God in this pure, true, and simple form. Hallelujah. It's very exciting to be here at this moment in time. And I want to especially thank God for bringing us all here at this moment in time to listen to the Word of God and to experience His great and wondrous blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All right. So I'm going to be sharing something with you today. And um, I'm just going to be sharing three points. Um, I'm going to be sharing three points. Now today I'm going to be talking to you on difference. Hallelujah. Are you excited? I'm going to be talking with you on difference. Let's go to 2 Chronicles chapter 18. 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 18. 18. All right, and um, let's read in the NLT. So, Second Chronicles chapter eighteen. Hallelujah. So, let's. Are we ready to read? All right, let's go on. So, let's read. It says, Jehoshaphat enjoyed great riches and high esteem. And he made an alliance with Ahab of Israel by having his son marry Ahab's daughter. A few years later, he went to Samaria to visit Ahab, who prepared a great banquet for him and his officials. They butchered great numbers of sheep, goats, and cattle for the feasts. Then Ahab enticed Jehoshaphat to join forces with him to recover Ramoth Gilead. Now, 2 Chronicles chapter 18 and the verse number 3 says, Will you go with me to Ramoth Gilead? King Ahab of Israel asked King Jehoshaphat of Judah. Jehoshaphat replied, Why, of course, you and I are as one and my troops are your troops. We will certainly join you in battle. Hmm. Then Jehoshaphat added, but first let's find out what the Lord says. Hallelujah. Verse 5. So the king of Israel summoned the prophets, 400 of them, and asked them, should we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or should I hold back? They all replied, yes, go right ahead. God will give the king victory. But Jehoshaphat asked, Is there not also a prophet of the Lord here? We should ask him the same question. The king of Israel replied to Jehoshaphat, There is one more man who could consult the Lord for us, but I hate him. He never prophesied anything but trouble for me. His name is Micaiah, son of Imla. Jehoshaphat replied, That's not the way a king should talk. Let's hear what he has to say. Verse 8, So the king of Israel called by one of his officials and said, Quick, bring Micah, son of Imla, King Ahab of Israel and King Jehoshaphat of Judah, dressed in their royal robes, were sitting on the thrones at the threshing floor near the gate of Samaria, and all of the Ahab's prophets were prophesying there in front of them. I'm going to be reading to verse 13. Now it says, One of them, Zedekiah's son of Kenanah, are you listening? These are very heavy names, so if you don't take care, you may miss them along the way. Now it says, One of them, Zedekiah, son of Canaanah, made some iron horns and proclaimed, This is what the Lord said, With these horns you will go the Arameans to death. Verse 11, it says, All the other prophets agreed. Yes, they said, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and be victorious, for the Lord will give 
the Lord will give the king victory. Meanwhile, the messenger who went to get Micaiah said to him, Look, all the prophets are promising victory for the king. Be sure that you agree with them and promise success. But Micaiah replied, As surely as the Lord lives, I will say only what my God says. Hallelujah. So are you getting the, the, the story so far? It's not anything difficult, so just pay attention. So I'm going to define to you what is being different. When somebody says you are different, the person has blessed you. And the reason why the person has blessed you is because of this. Listen, what is different or what is difference in that manner? Difference is um, what you tell me that. Difference is a sort of unusual activity of some sort from a routine. Do you get it? So it's like every day I come on here, but maybe tomorrow I may not be here. I may be at another place preaching, but will be broadcasting. So I'm at a different place. So I've changed the routine. So it's a different environment. Do you understand what I'm saying? So a difference is a change of a regular routine of some someone or something or a certain attitude amen so with this story we realize that um what was the man's name was it ahab or jehoshaphat yes it was jehoshaphat so he married uh, he made his daughter to marry um ahab's uh, whatever so moving on from that, um, now the thing came and they said, okay, we want to rise against this nation. You, I hope you saw that part. They said they want to rise against this nation. Um, will you join us? And the man said, surely, which was Ahab, I will join you. But first, let us seek the will of the Lord. I hope you saw that in the scripture. Let's go back again. Let's go back again. Um, yes. So that, what, what verse was that? Let's go back. Yes. So it says, Will you go with me to what? Ram of Gilead, King Ahab of Israel, as King Jehoshaphat. So, um, Jehoshaphat replied, Why, of course, you and I are as one, and my troops are your troops. We we'll certainly join you in battle. So that was Jehoshaphat. So Ahab wanted to attack. And Jehoshaphat says, But first, let us find out what the Lord says. Now, you see, one reason why I wanted us to use the story of kings is because, you see, most of the times, Kings don't have the ability or the time to be listening to the word of God as we regular Christians. As kings and priests in Christ Jesus, it is very important for us or it is very vital that we notice that being different is important. Wherever we find ourselves, we must be the unique one because we know the word of God and we know the truth. And we are of the Godhead. We are of the God kind. Praise the Lord. So therefore, if anything, we should be different so that others can refer to us. I hope you understand what I'm saying. So the definition of being different is just to be a single change in a routine. So King Ahab was the routine that I'm talking about. It was a routine of kings that didn't care and just wanted to attack cities and take over cities as usual. King Jehoshaphat was also a king, but you realize that he didn't go in the same train. He would have just said, okay, let's just go. Do you understand? He would have said, oh, let's just go. Let's, let's go and destroy the place. But he said, first, let us seek the Lord's permission or let us see what the Lord will see. That is what I liked about the whole story. 
because he made a difference, an instant difference, just to show that he is of the Lord. Some of us, we cannot be open enough, or we cannot open our mouths enough to say that, oh, I'm a different person. You know that. There are some people that are there that cannot be open enough. Or if they are saying that, oh, I'm a Christian and I'm different from the others. Some don't really have this confidence to make it known that they are different. At times, you can't even see the difference between you and an unbeliever. Sometimes you see certain Christians and then the way they talk and the way they act during certain situations will tell you that. Ah, so what's really the difference between this one and an unbeliever? They're meaning that there is no need of being born again. So that in this and many other reasons is why most of the people are not born again today. Praise God. So being different is changing a routine. Now I want you to understand that King Jehoshaphat in this story changed the routine of kings, terrorizing kingdoms. Now note again, he wanted to claim a land because he knew that what Ahab would divide it equally for both of them. But he said, let us seek the Lord's permission first. So he set a difference. I hope you understand that. He set a difference. A very, very noticeable difference. So Ahab who did not pray, he did not pray. Because he said, let's see what the Lord will say. So obviously, how do you hear from the Lord? You pray. That was the Old Testament. So he didn't pray. He had people to pray for him. This was how kingship was. So, so if you're a king, <laughs> nothing is impossible for you. Immediately you command you have. That is the life you are meant to be living today. But you ask some and you don't know why they are feeling like this or they don't know why they are not having this life of a king. As the Bible has told us that we are kings and priests. Hallelujah. So, he made a difference. Now, obviously, Jehoshaphat also did not pray. But it was the Spirit of the Lord that spoke to, through him to tell him to seek the Lord's permission. So, it was like they were of the same kind, but there was a little difference. That was the Lord being implemented in their action. How are you implementing the word of God in your actions today? How many people know of the good news? How many people know of the kindness, the greatness, the, the goodness of the Lord through your life today? How many people know that? Or are you just sitting down to keep the word of God to yourself? That's selfishness. Praise God. That is absolute selfishness. So I want to ask you again. How many people have been impacted? You say that you are a Christian. Okay, nobody has taken that from you. But how is your Christianity impacting others? How is your difference impacting others because we have a mandate now the now the difference between you and an unbeliever is that you are on a mission an unbeliever is in the world doing nothing so i'm asking that are you really fulfilling the mission or is the difference that has happened in you that or that you claim that has happened in you making a difference to the unbeliever or you are just sitting there with it in one place Listen, if you are doing that, I want to entice you today to stop. Because gradually, day by day, we are running out of time. I hope you are hearing. We are running out gradually of time. And tonight I'm going to be sharing with you just a few things. Now look. Um, let's move away from the king's side. So they have done their part and he has made the difference. So now you realize that Ahab now called 400 prophets. 
and note something that all the prophets spoke good of him. It was not as though they were in sync with the spirits. But they said good things to favor the king. Why? Because if they spoke bad of him, they will do what? They will come, the king will attack them. That was why he didn't like Machai. Because he spoke the truth. So being different in Christianity or your difference in Christianity as a born again Christian is to be a custodian of truth. That is not even here. But that is what the scripture should tell you. That your difference as a born again Christian today is being a custodian of truth. Ask me why. You have to speak the truth. You have to speak the truth. Speak it. Who are you hiding it from? And why? For what reason? Praise the Lord. So, the first point. Be different by speech. Now you realize that all the prophets who he had called were speaking in favor of him. Not so they were being a prophet of man, not a prophet of God. Because if you are a prophet of God, you see what is only directly from the Lord and not what will favor you and your family. That is what most prophets do today. They see what will favor you that will get their money into their bank account. And that is why poverty is popular among Christians today. Believe me, if people listen to my preachings more, they would be out of this world. If people listen to me more, they would be far, far out of this world with greater things and greater opportunities as Christians. Because listen, I'm living a fruitful life. I can confirm that today that I'm living a fruitful life. This is the life that you should have as a Christian. It shouldn't only be for me. That is why I come here to share with you these things. So number one, be different by speech. The 400 prophets, eh, even if all of them are speaking in favor of God, and God says still this thing, do not follow the 400 to say what favors them. Say what God has asked you to say. Are you listening? Say what God has asked you to say. Don't say what will favor you. Because what will favor you will definitely expire at some point. But if you speak for God, there's no way. Say there's no way. There's no way that God is going to watch you to fail. There's no way he wants you to fail. Say amen. Hallelujah. So that is it. So be different by speech. And we find that in 2 Chronicles chapter 18 and the verse number 30. Let me just go there very quickly. I'm going to go very fast today. I don't want to waste time. And it says, according to the scriptures over here. Put it here. Yeah. So it says, But Micaiah replied, As surely as the Lord lives, I will see only what my God sees. So he is saying that I will not speak in favor for myself because I'm not a prophet of God. I don't speak for the people's comforts. I speak for the Lord's comforts. I speak for what the Lord has told me to speak. And that is final. Many of the prophets that we have today in our world, they don't speak the right thing. They Hallelujah. So, as I was saying, sorry for the lengthy break for all the people watching on demand. Um, we apologize sincerely for that. And um, let's move on. So, I'm just going to be going on and I'll end that be different by speech. So, being different by speech, what does that mean? So, with 
or who is speaking, you have to be different because you are of God. Now, something has to prove that you are of God to somebody or something or somebody or someone that you are of God because you can't just go and then, you know, speak like any other unbeliever. At times, it is a strategy as to how to get souls or soul winning. I hope you get me over there. Yes. It's a strategy to soul winning. But if it comes to speaking what God has told you to speak, you have to be different. Don't say what will pay you, rather say what will make God happy. See what will glorify the name of the Lord. Don't just go anywhere and do whatever you want. It's a very, very wrong thing to do. And it is punishment. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. That is one thing I want you to understand. So if the Lord gives you something to say, do not hesitate one minute to speak it. If the person says, go and tell this person that do this now. If the Lord says, do this now, you do it. No matter the circumstance, you do it. That is why I came here tonight. God asked me, do another revival at 8. And he said, do it. And I said, okay. There's no problem with that. I'll go ahead and do it. So that is how I'm here tonight. So if there is anything that I want you to understand today, you have to be different. Be different by your speech. Don't seem like the others. Remember, at the end of the day, they will not account for your works. So be different today and save your life. Hallelujah. I've shared with you for some time now. So therefore, I want you to stand to your feet and let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you. We praise your holy name. We bless you. We give you the opportunity. We thank you and we ask that you come into today to make us different, different in a good way, to your will and to your ways, you know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you, ladies.